page from her journal. Mother's crying in the next room. She says it's because she's happy, but I don't believe her. My father is getting out of prison. My friends protest the unlawful imprisonments, but I wish they'd kept Michael O'Shea locked up forever. Life in prison isn't long enough for him. It would kill my mother if she ever read this. What if Michael ever read it? Would it kill him? Or would he kill me? Well, the violence didn't stop when he was on the inside. But at least when I read about something terrible in the paper, I knew my father wasn't the cause. But now... God help us all. Stanley took me to this lovely old tree on the cliffs overlooking the sea. It was just the perfect spot. Then I saw there were notches carved into the trunk. I pointed them out to him and asked him how many other girls had he brought here. Stanley laughed and said when he was just a lad he and his dad would come to the same spot for picnics and Paddy would notch the tree to show how much Stanley had grown. I turned as red as a beetroot and muttered some kind of apology. When we sat down to eat lunch I saw another notch at the base of the tree. When I asked him what that one was for, he winked and said, Margaret Kane. Mother begged me not to go, but I assured her it was a peaceful rally. Molly wouldn't go with me, she was afraid the army would show up. So I dragged Stanley with me. I thought for sure he'd want to be there, because his father was one of the speakers. Paddy Whitaker was an electrifying presence. People were cheering and clapping as he spoke about the end to the violence. A peaceful end to the troubles. He spoke with such conviction, I nearly wept. When I looked over at Stanley, he was wearing fucking headphones and messing with his cassette player. He said he'd heard it all before. I couldn't believe it. He has no idea how lucky he is. shelter. Now this lock. I've got to find a way through. Journal. This makes no sense. 
of this valve. Maybe. That's good. Ah, oh, thank God. I don't know what's wrong with that man. Stanley came into Rory's pub tonight, sweaty and out of breath. His eye was swollen, his lip was bleeding, and he looked as proud as a peacock. He and one of his no-good maids went messing into East Belfast to stir up trouble. Stanley had the brilliant idea to spray the story plough over a Unionist mural, but they got caught by some locals and they got into a scrap. Rory thought that was a gas and bought Stanley a pint. I told Stanley he was an idiot. What if he'd been caught by the guard or the UVF? They'd have bloody killed him. But he was just too proud of himself to listen. Jesus. It's cold in here as it is outside. Maybe colder. Is this another bunker? How many are there? You've got to be kidding me. Everything's frozen. And I'm running out of time. Stanley can still surprise me, even after all this time. We drove out for a picnic at our tree by the ocean, but when we got there, Stanley pulled a guitar case out of the boot. I had no idea he played guitar. All afternoon we laid together, in the grass, under the tree, while Stanley strummed and plucked away. It was grand. Then he told me to close my eyes. <laughs> I told him, he better not have any funny ideas, but he said he tried learning a new song just for me. After a few bars, it started to sound familiar, but I couldn't stop myself from kissing him before he could finish the song. I'll let him finish it for me someday.
face hurts from trying to smile all night. I can't blame Stanley. There's no way he could have known. He's not that cruel. He knew I was named after Beethoven's opera and just assumed that I'd be a fan. But it was my father who loved the opera. He'd blast those records into the night and stagger about with a half-empty bottle, waving it in time with the music. It was terrifying. But I loved Stanley. So I gripped his hand and smiled through the entire performance. Ali and I snuck out to a party tonight. It was in full swing by the time we got there, meaning all the boys were bollocksed. Well, not all. We weren't there long when this beautiful lad hands me a beer and said his name was Colin. I was tall, with bright green eyes, and he wore neon-coloured runners. I asked him if it was his party. He shook his head and said that he knew it was my party. Then he turned and waved his hand around like he was the great fucking Gatsby. And the first thing we saw was Stanley Whitaker throwing up in the kitchen sink. I laughed and said he could have his party back. I was blathered for a while and we were really getting on when Stanley Whitaker stumbled over and asked Colin if he ever wore those shoes outside. And before I could tell him to fuck off, Stanley asked Colin if he knew I was the daughter of Michael O'Shea. I felt my legs go numb. Colin couldn't get away from me fast enough. It's working. Kiss my arse. 
Island. Finally, you know, the sooner you can get her off this fucking island. <laughs> 